And you are listening to 94.1 KPFA and 89.3 KPFB in Berkeley, 88.1 KFCF in Fresno, 97.5 K248BR in Santa Cruz and online at kpfa.org. The time is 1 p.m. Stay tuned next for your own health and fitness. Welcome to your own health and fitness. I'm health integrationist Lena Berman, and I'm here with Jeff Fawcett, PhD. We come to you weekly with a critical, independent voice on the politics and practice of health. If you think you've heard enough about how technology is changing our world, our brains, health, you need to listen to this hour. Since technology rarely goes backwards and usually picks up speed, we find ourselves along for the ride, hoping that things will get sorted out as we go. It seems out of our control, and that, I believe, is intentional. As people become better educated, there are opportunities to make important personal decisions about how and how much to participate. Along with knowledge comes responsibility for helping to make the world a better place as well as a more connected one. Today we will be interviewing a researcher with a very long view about how and how much we should use electric, electronic, and wireless technologies. Today you'll learn what choices you have and how they'll affect your health, your children, and the planet. Today we talk with Martin Blank, Ph.D., who has devoted 40 years to studying the intricate health effects of electricity and wireless. I think you'll be surprised by how much you can have it all, or most of it. First, some thoughts from Dr. Jeffrey Fawcett. Thank you, Lena. Researchers at McGill University in Canada report that lab rats and mice are affected by the sex of the person who works with them. When men, rather than women, work with the animals, they, the animals, show a stress response. It is not a huge response, but enough of a stress response to affect experimental results. The significance of this is profound and disturbing. Rats and mice comprise 95% of the test animals used in experiments. Conclusions are drawn from those experiments that affect decisions made by both civilians, such as you and me, and healthcare professionals, such as your doctor and your public health and environmental officials. Experiments typically consist of exposing the test animal to something, such as a toxicant or a pharmaceutical. Data are collected on what happens to the test animal, such as how many develop cancer or diabetes. And then conclusions are made about the risk of getting sick from the exposure. Part of the job consists of performing what's called multivariate analysis, a statistical technique that includes not only the experimental exposure of interest to researchers, but other factors that might affect the health of the animals. One of the more interesting factors is the physical and social environment in which the test animals live. In humans, more and more experiments include socioeconomic data. In both cases, those environmental factors affect health outcomes. The point is that if researchers leave out these factors, their conclusions might be wrong. I want to remind you that the conclusions can go both ways. Researchers might conclude that the exposure causes harm or that it doesn't cause harm. Causes cancer, doesn't cause cancer, causes diabetes, doesn't cause diabetes. As a result, people might conclude that, for example, an exposure to flame retardant does not harm health. Or people might be directed by public health or environmental agency to not worry about, for example, exposure to the radiation that comes from smartphones. And so it's possible that researchers will now conduct their experiments and include the sex of lab workers in their multivariate analysis of the experiment's results. Another factor that is not included in animal experiments is exposure to electric and electromagnetic fields. For example, wireless devices are widespread and workers probably carry them into the lab without thinking about it. What effect does that have on the experiment's results? We don't know. But we do know that it has an effect on the lab rats. For example, research published in the International Journal of Radiation Biology reports that exposure to radiation in the range used by cell phones and Wi-Fi technologies causes oxidative stress in lab rats. 
When exposed, lab rat mitochondria overproduce reactive oxygen species, which is part of the stress response. Creating reactive oxygen species is a normal function of the mitochondria. For example, as an essential part of the immune response to infection, reactive oxygen species attack and destroy bacteria and viruses. However, reactive oxygen species can also attack the body that produced them. And so, like exposure to males, rats exposed to wireless technologies have a stress response. How much? We don't know. How does it affect results and conclusions? We don't know. That's because no one is asking, or at least very few are asking. For example, it's almost common knowledge that obesity causes diabetes. And yet some independent thinkers looked at the rise in both from the perspective of exposure to electric and electromagnetic fields. This includes the epidemiologist Sam Melham, who recently published the article Evidence that dirty electricity is causing the widespread epidemics of obesity and diabetes in the journal Electromagnetic Biology and Medicine. Milham argues that the obesity causes diabetes theory doesn't hold up when comparing different nations. Some nations do have rates of obesity and diabetes that coincide, but others do not. That is, high diabetes rates, but low obesity rates, and vice versa. What he does see is that nations with electricity produced largely using generators powered by fossil fuels, which are famous for producing electricity, consistently show high rates of diabetes. Another, less formal analysis appears in the recently published book An Electronic Silent Spring by Katie Singer. One of the people she interviews points out that national diabetes rates correspond closely to national penetration rates for cell phone usage. More cell phone use, more diabetes. This isn't a tangent. As I mentioned, when exposed to wireless radiation, mitochondria overproduce reactive oxygen species, and that constitutes an element of the stress, tr of the stress response. Mitochondria produce all of the energy you use. Diabetes and obesity are disruptions to your energy metabolism. So, a narrowly focused conclusion is that the scientific community has entirely missed a line of causation for two of the most vexing health problems we face because the political economy of wireless technologies causes the scientific community to avert its eyes. More broadly, eyes are averted for, from wireless technologies as a factor affecting experimental outcomes generally. The aforementioned political economy of wireless technologies is characterized succinctly in the article on how wireless causes a stress response in mitochondria. Quote, the influence of electromagnetic radiation on biological processes attracts a great deal of attention for, for many reasons. Firstly, it is governed by military applications. End quote. A transcript is available at yourownhealthandfitness.org. I'm Jeffrey Fawcett. Take care of yourself. Jeff Fawcett is a political economist, writer, and health integrationist who produces this show with me and is primary author of our book, Too Much Medicine, Not Enough Health. Now to today's topic, which is, I'm just going to call it the same as what Dr. Blank called his book, Overpowered, because I think that says it all. And to give him a brief introduction, Dr. Martin Blank graduated from Bronx High High School of Science and City College of New York and received his doctorate from Columbia University and Cambridge University. He is currently a special lecturer in the Department of Physiology and Cellular Biophysics at Columbia University where he was associate professor for over 40 years. During this period, he edited 12 books and published over 200 papers on the biological effects of EMF. He's worked for the Office of Naval Research as well as several industrial labs including uh, Unilever um, and has also organized scientific meetings, including two world congresses on electricity and magnetism in biology and medicine, and the Gordon Research Conference on biochemistry. Uh, 
Additionally, he has served on the editorial boards of several journals, including Electromagnetic, Bio Electromagnetic Biology and Medicine, and edited the 2009 issue of Paraphysiology on Biological Effects of EMF. He was one of the organizers of the Bioinitiative Report, where he authored the section on stress proteins. He served as the president of the Bio uh, Electric Magnetic Society from 1997 through 1998. Dr. Blank has served as an invited expert regarding the harms of EMF for Canadian Parliament, for the House Committee on Natural Resources and Energy in Vermont, and for Brazil's Supreme Federal Court. His book, as I said, his newly published book, is Overpowered which uh, we will be discussing today. So um, a very warm welcome to you. Very pleased that you could join us. Well, thank you. So uh, may I call you Martin or do you prefer... You may call me Martin. Thank you. And you may I may yeah. I actually just jump in and, and kind of uh, give a, a coda to the previous comment? Sure, sure, sure. It was on the uh, effect of radio frequency radiation. And one of the things that might be of interest is a study that was done, uh, started many years ago by Dr. Lee, that's L-I, uh, from Berkeley, uh, from Kaiser Permanente. Uh, and, and the thing is that he, thought, he was interested in the effects of electric blankets on miscarriages. And they, they did a study, they published it and so on, and they found that there was definitely a uh, correlation. A, a certain level was sufficient to cause the miscarriage. But then he followed up the children that were born from those mothers and where he had the exposure data. And one of the interesting things is that the children who are now about 10, 12, something like that, have a higher rate of obesity. Mm -hmm. And this is the point that was mentioned uh, in, uh, earlier in the comments. And this, uh, first of all, shows that the effects of... Uh, of these electromagnetic fields occur even in utero mm -hmm. and secondly that the radiation it's not really radiation at that level it's low frequency it's power frequency and the power frequency has its effects as well and that's one of the points that i that i wish to stress that everybody is now focused on the radio frequency uh that's coming from cell phones and from smart meters but it's apparently the body reacts to frequencies across the range across the spectrum and these are, this is just one of the studies that I think is fascinating that you have that the, uh, not only obesity, but there, were, there was also asthma showed up and um, uh, double, I believe, double the risk in the children uh, of, who were exposed in utero. So it's kind of one should pay attention not only to the radio frequency that's out there, but to all the electromagnetic, I call it pollution, because in effect, it's not a natural environment. If you go back 150 years, we never had this kind of uh, electromagnetic environment. The, uh, they, when the electric bulb, light bulb came in, it started a whole trend transition where now that whole part, the non-ionizing spectrum, is just chock full of uh, electromagnetic fields, a, a mm -hmm. variety of frequencies, mm -hmm. and they are all having effects because this is just one of those I wanted to mention because it kind of fit in nicely with the earlier comments. Yeah, Jeffrey's but, comments, yeah. Yeah, no, I, that's marvelous. Um, I, it, one of the things that your book does, your book is magnificent. It's the best that I've read on the topic. It really is. Um, oh, there are some really good books out there, but this book just is, it, it, this is the book, really. This is the book. I mean, I'm going to buy copies of this and give this to people. That's how good it is. So the reason, one of the reasons it's good is that you're very good at teaching. You're a very good professor. You're very good at, in, in, at making information accessible. And you explain from the very beginning, because there are naysayers who are going to say, oh, well, you know, the sun is electromagnetic and we've got rocks and we've got this and that. But it's really not the same. And you explain why it's not the same. And you break down all these different things in a way that's quite interesting. And even though I know this topic, I learned stuff from you. Um, but one of the things that's, that I wanted to stress before we get into this stuff, really get weighed into it, is that you end your book by giving people very specific and detailed explanations of how to protect themselves. So 
the problem that we run into when we cover this stuff is that, as it says in, in part of your book, in Europe, 100% cover it. People, 100% of people in Europe now have cell phones, 85% in the United States. So there are some of us that are holdouts or that use them, you know, old, old style phones that we keep turned off in a glove compartment. I don't do that anymore, but I used to. Um, but, you know, this is, this is the most successful product introduction of anything in the world and it is the most invasive of any of the sort of technologies that were introduced that turned out to be toxic extremely toxic but at the end of the book you you explain how to set up a household that minimizes your exposures keeping into consideration the concomitant re the reactions that you get between just normal electrical fields you know like from electricity and the fields that are now polluted with radio frequency from smart meters and infrastructure around us and the, the devices they were using and how to use these things with, with the minimal amount of risk. Uh, and, of course, you go through all of the research, which is considerable. Nobody can say there's no research. So give us a taste of what life in this world is like if you're prudent well, I think the, uh, let me give you just a couple of things that, that can be easily done and that people don't often think about. Uh, Wi-Fi is a, you know, people get addicted because it's, so, it's a, such a tremendous convenience. But one does not use it when one is asleep. There's no reason to keep it on. People just do not shut off the power, and that's easy enough to do. So just turn the switch off when you're not using it and that should be true in schools as well when they when they put it in in fact in schools it should not be put in as wi-fi there's no reason why they shouldn't spend the extra few bucks and put in cables because they'll get the same educational value and they will still and they will not be exposed to whatever is on and probably it's on throughout the school day and so children are being sit, sitting there and being irradiated for no reason at all there's no educational reason for that sort of thing well, the plugged-in uh, Ethernet connections are faster and more accurate, too, and more private. That's right. Yeah. That's right. But the, the school, it involves a, a, a bit more money. And so, uh, and also, who knows what goes on behind the doors, the closed doors, when the deals are made. But the fact of the matter is that that can be avoided. The other thing that can be avoided is just a single thing that most people don't think about is just turning off the power on the cell phone so that you don't have to get the instant ring, you know, when somebody's calling you. You pick it up, let's say, every half hour and see whether you've got any calls. <coughs> when your power is on, your, the tower is checking where you are. It's sending signals to where, where the phone is, and the phone is answering. Here I am, in case I got a call, send it here. And you can avoid that by having that uh, system powered off, which means that it's not sending signals out to the tower regularly. And by the way, when it sends a signal out to the tower, it's also irradiating your body. Yeah. Let me just say this is your own health and fitness, and I'm Lena Berman, and we've got Dr. Martin Blank, Ph.D. on the phone, author of Overpowered. Go ahead. Um, yeah, the other thing to remember about smartphones in particular is they don't actually really turn off completely. They keep even, you know, even when they're powered down, they don't. So it's good to get a shielded bag and put your cell phone in the bag uh, when you're sleeping. Well, there's no reason to have it near you when you're sleeping. You well, know. people sleep with their phones. And kids <laughs> they, like to put it under their pillows. Yeah, that's the most horrifying. Clock. And yep. it, it's unfortunate what the, uh, you know, there's certain, it's so convenient and so easy to do and uh, you don't think about the consequences. Of well, course, kids always think they're going to live forever. And so the thing is, they don't have these ideas in mind. And when you're an adult, you're a little circumspect and you start to take precautions when they're easy enough to do. And these are the kind that are easy enough to do. But there's one other part of the, uh, of the dynamic here that one ought to pay attention to. These electromagnetic fields cause molecular damage. And that's been uh, verified. I mean, it's been demonstrated many times. And the body repairs most of that damage. In fact, it almost repairs almost all of it. But it must do this under, you know, certain conditions. And one of the things is it usually happens during sleep. 
And one of the things that uh, controls sleep is the uh, hormone melatonin, which is secreted by the pineal gland in the brain, and it does so at night. So when your body is secreting the melatonin, it is uh, stimulating and, and enabling these various uh, repair processes. And uh, one of the things that electromagnetic radiation does is turn off the pineal gland so the melatonin is not being uh, secreted. So the, you've got a kind of a double uh, jeopardy there that uh, not only being irradiated by whatever this is, but it's also stopping the repair processes. And you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that your repair processes are in full swing. And that is the second, you know, part of the, uh, if one, one wants to prevent damage, but one wants to also repair the damage because the body is a dynamic system and you've got both processes going on all the time. If you want to repair damage, there are things you can do that are unrelated to electromagnetic fields. Get good rest, get exercise, and eat well, to be you know, nutritionally sound so that you're getting the proper balance of foods and well, adequate foods. Yeah, the only, the only problem here uh, is that the fields not only interfere with melatonin, they interfere with your calcium channels also. And uh, the other thing is that we now know, and you talk about this in detail about the DNA research, is that the DNA damage that occurs... In, when people are uh, even, in fact, even really tiny amounts of exposures, I mean, amounts that are thousands of times below the allowable limits, are causing the most damage. And DNA is being damaged in a way that makes it very difficult to repair itself. Well, it's uh, when you get a big repair burden, and you get a lot of jobs coming into the same shop, uh, some are not going to be repaired, or certainly sometimes you can get inadequately. One of the uh, protective mechanisms that's available in the body is when the damage gets to be too great, uh, the cell commits suicide. It's, prop, uh, it's called apoptosis, and the, it is something that uh, is a safety measure, that there are certain times when the you know, just throw up your hands and say, I, I give up, I can't do anything with this. And that's healthy because it's important to get rid of the stuff that's beyond repair. But by and large, the body does a good job, and we should support our bodies. In other words, they're, all, they're fighting for us, and we could do the least we can do is to make sure that they're in good condition, these various systems. And so I, I stress that because most people, whether they're worried about EMF or not, can pay attention to this aspect of health because it's a very important part of it to help the body help itself. So uh, some people think they can protect themselves by looking for phones that are have a lower SAR rating, which is uh, 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 not you say not a not a very good measurement, not a very good way of getting a sense of whether a device is safe or not. Uh, the whole safety approach by the various agencies uh, it really is is not based at all on biology. They say that the, the important property that one should measure is the heating up of tissue. And true enough, when you heat up tissue high enough, it will cause damage. But the damage shows up much earlier. It shows up what before you can detect a change in temperature of, the, of a cell or a tissue. Uh, we did this research at Columbia University. I was working uh, uh, very closely with uh, Reba Goodman, who is a uh, professor in the pathology department. And over the years, we've published many, many uh, papers on this. But we were the ones who first found that uh, you... Uh, when you stimulate with electromagnetic fields, you activate the cellular stress response. That the cell starts to make uh, proteins, new proteins that are not made before. These are there are about 20 of these stress proteins, and they are indicative of the damage that's done by the signal that stimulates it. Now, stress proteins were originally demonstrated or found in response to increases in temperature. 
So temperature is, is the first stimulus, environmental stimulus, that was found to cause damage in cells. And uh, this was uh, stimulated the repair mechanism. But since then, a lot of things, there are a lot of chemical changes that occur. Alcohol is one of the things. Various toxins will stimulate stress proteins. And the stress proteins are stimulated by non-ionizing radiation. That is the power frequency all the way through the radio frequency. Well, that tells you something. First of all, that the body is giving you a signal that it occurs uh, that that is telling you that there has been damage by these different fields. But when you get the same kind of response at the power frequency as you get at the radio frequency microwave range, the difference in energy is enormous. It said the millions uh, differ um, from these two ranges if you get up to the microwave compared to the power frequency, which tells you that the energy deposition is not the significant factor. You need a certain amount of energy to get the process started, but that's very small. When we study thresholds that occur at, at the, in the power frequency range, the threshold was the order of a few milligauss to set off this stress response so that you'd start getting stress, uh, the uh, stress response proteins. And uh, a few milligauss is not very much higher than what you find in most rooms. I mean, most rooms are the order of one milligauss, uh, unless you have special equipment in there and that comes from the electric lights the uh, circuits in the walls and uh, whatever you know standard equipment you, you may be ha have in, in places like bedrooms and so on but the, the fact is that the difference in energy that you need to get the uh, the body to, to let you know that it's it's in trouble. It has some damage. It's got to do some some repair work, first aid. Uh, the, the difference in energy is really trivial compared to the. I mean, it's really the amount that, of energy that's needed to set this thing off is trivial, and it certainly doesn't. It doesn't support the idea that people have used to set up the safety standards. Yeah, the allowable they, limits are just ridiculous. Yes, because yeah. I mean, what we have. We have shown that the uh, when you compare the uh, temperature that, that you, you get a stress response, which is the cell's way of telling you, long before you can detect a change in temperature. Yeah, no, it's the uh, you have some charts and graphs and stuff that show this too. That it's these really tiny exposures that are causing problems. But the other thing is that people are not getting tiny exposures because the new equipment that people are buying, the new appliances, and even you, you point out there's one of your charts has uh, where you're getting the most uh, exposures, the most fields, and it turns out that your television is huge. Television is huge. It isn't, unfortunately, the case that, you know, the thing is that none of this is benign. It's all a question of how much your body can tolerate. So you start putting in not only these big, huge TVs, but you have all these other pieces of equipment in your house that add to the electromagnetic noise in your house. And then you start having new products now being developed, which have more electric more digital and electronic components in them. Tel uh, t TVs now um, are wired up to, to interact with wireless, so they have wireless components. So they're emitting RF, even if you uh, have them turned off and they're still plugged in. Your refrigerator now has digital displays, and those are all electronic, and those are kicking out RF. Um, so there's concomitant reactions between all of these devices and your wireless uh, router and possibly your smart meter on your house, it, it, your whole house becomes the, the amount. People didn't even realize. The LED bulbs and the CFLs, the CFLs are, we know are nasty, but the newest uh, LED bulbs now, if you test them using a test that Blake Levitt and many of, other, of, their, of, of, you, uh, of the people that you know who talk about these topics, the AM radio test, which is to um, just put an AM radio on a kind of between station setting so that it has a I'll bit of a at the hiss. end of the dial. Yeah, at the end, end of, of the dial. And then um, walk around with it in the house and hold it up to different things. And you'll find out from the loud hissing and popping which things are emitting radio frequency. In, in, and everybody reacts to different uh, 
different frequencies of these, but many people react to the frequency of AM radio. So you can test things, and what you find out is that there's stuff that you didn't think. I mean, it makes you really realize that the bedroom has to be set up to be as non-electric as possible. Oh, let me let me yeah. point out one thing about the TV. I mean, when TVs first came out, they used a cathode ray tube oh, uh, projector. Yeah, we know. That, that, that's why they, uh, that was terrible. And the kids used to like to uh, stay in front of the screen and uh, maybe a couple of feet were in front of it and they'd get the full blast of this stuff. But now with the flat screens and the uh, different technology, it's it's much easier that way. And you can test and see how the, uh, you know, your static test will uh, will respond as you approach your uh your screens and you'll see that the uh, you'll get less static as a result uh, yeah but the bigger is not better and plasma tvs are apparently very dirty as well oh i haven't yeah to. yeah the plasmas are pretty bad but um the you know the the thing that's that's difficult here is that when people are exposed as they are now in our modern society to low level constant exposures because there is infrastructure outside and we've got cell towers and antennas, and we've got inside, we've got stuff, and then we've got the uh, infrastructure for the smart grid and all these other things. The the ambient fields of EMF and particularly RF are much higher than they ever were before. And even if people are not choosing to use these devices, they're getting exposed. And it's these low-level, cumulative, low-level exposures that are causing the most mischief. You have cases of of uh, cancer clusters in the top floors of apartment buildings where there are towers and antennas on the roof. Yep. They had a case recently in the uh, University of Melbourne in, in Australia where the top floor of one of the labs was uh, where they had one of this electronic stuff and they had all kinds of antennas on the roof. They had a cluster of uh, cancers and they actually closed down that lab because they, uh, when, they when they found that out. So it, it really can amount especially when you've got a lot of the stuff concentrated there. Yeah, it builds up. Yeah. So so we need to just break briefly for a short musical break. This is Your Own Health and Fitness. I'm Lena Bourbon. I'm on the phone today with uh, Martin Blank, Ph.D., author of Overpowered, what science tells us about the dangers of cell phones and other Wi-Fi devices and what you can do about it. We'll be right back after this quick break. your own health and fitness. I'm Lena Berman with Jeff Fawcett. Uh, we are doing a show today with uh, Martin Blank, PhD, 40-year researcher on the effects of EMF on health, and we're talking about his book, Overpowered. Visit our website, yourownhealthandfitness.org, for easier extended access to our over 500 archive shows with our library card. Find out about our practice, a free stream of this week's show, our book, and lots more at yourownhealthandfitness.org. If you want to reach us, Feel free to email us at admin at your own health and fitness dot org. Um, Dr. Blank, do you have some place that you want to send people on the web? Well, I'm uh, in the physiology department at Columbia University, and uh, I have a, a page there. I don't have my own website. Perhaps I could get one. This, I'm not really with this, uh, you know, with all this revolution. You know, that's one of the things when you grow up in a certain uh, climate, you tend to, uh, you know, think that that's the natural, normal way to do things. And I guess this whole change that's occurred in our society is just, in many ways, unbelievable. When you, I mean, when you walk, when you walk on the street and see these. Uh, you know, 
kids, I was going to call them, but but uh, young adults, teenagers, walking along, just looking at this little box in their hand. Yes, nobody's and, nobody's yeah, nobody's uh, paying attention to anything else around them, and it is changing our culture and our society in a way that may end up having some value, but we aren't clear yet what that would be. We know though that prolonged cumulative exposure increases this uh, oxidative um, a protein shock protein problem and that accelerates aging we also know that um, these fields are causing enormous i mean it's like fertility rates have dropped what 50 percent in the developed world I, so, I hadn't. yeah it's in the book it's in your book well uh, i must have seen it <laughs> yeah it's in your book yeah it's in your book and it's in other places the fertility rates are being affected very much by this oh you're talking about things like the uh, studies that are done on, yes. on male fertility yes. and the decrease in, in sperm count yes by all the, yes that's been shown many many times yes okay but i so, didn't know if it's affected birth rates has it Yes, the fertility rates are going down all over the world. Um, and now we're seeing Alzheimer's uh, appears to be very strongly linked to these. Um, we know that childhood leukemia is related to power lines. Uh, we've got neurodegenerative diseases. We've got the blood-brain barrier breaches that we've discussed so often here. Now we see melatonin rates going up, depression. We're seeing the eyes and ears affected, and I'm hearing more and more people uh, having extreme heart symptoms that have no particular reason to have them for any other reason. Um, so part of the problem, like I said, is that we've got proximity to cell towers, we've got cancer clusters, we've got Wi-Fi networks, we've got uh, Wi-Fi in schools, we've got towers on top of schools and schools and things like this. And we're not only affecting our children, but we're affecting uh, our planet. The, there are all these non-human uh, effects that are taking place as well in plants and trees and bees and birds and animals. The Department of the Interior uh, they had a press release where they talked about the damage that's being done to uh, birds. And my migrating birds, uh, they just they get disoriented in the in the fields that are uh, being transmitted, especially within the vicinity of towers. And they've had this other stuff problem for quite a few years, where they uh, when they fly at night, they lose a lot of birds by hitting up the hitting in these towers. The towers are quite tall, and so they uh, they are barriers that the birds don't see until it's too late. So yeah. If you would, Martin, could you also talk about this issue of the fact, this this odd sort of counterintuitive thing that we find in the science now, that the low, low, low level constant exposures, which is what everyone's getting now, uh, are causing more problems. So, Yeah, one of the things, and we found this uh, early on in, in some of our measurements, that the uh, when you repeated uh, stimuli, you, know, you you'd, uh, exposed to... Uh, some uh, EMF, and then you wait a while, let's say in a couple of hours, and then you do another exposure, you found that the response, the cellular stress response, which is a protective response, was diminished. And this is one of the problems that uh, you have with repeated exposure. The body adapts to various uh, stresses that, that come to bear, and uh, it becomes, it, it doesn't react as much. Which means that the protective aspect of the stress proteins, which were designed to do things like repair molecules or trans transport molecules across membranes, things like that, they their the capacity is diminished. Which tells you that if you have too much of this stuff and they're repeated and repeated day after day, your body's not going to be able to cope with it with the strain the way it did initially. So this is one of the bad things that you just have if you keep getting exposed in a system you're going to get eventually to a point where the body cannot uh, manage what the, the damage that's being done and you, yeah and your cells are dying and there's other things happening as well but again i want to repeat that your book covers protective strategies for how to set up your house so it's safer and how to what things to leave on and what things not and how to measure your, your own you know measure your levels in your house yourself so you can make intelligent decisions about how you're using stuff um 
Uh, I'm, I, what I'm mostly concerned about is that I think some people believe that young people, since they've been exposed to this it, it, from the womb on, are going to be better at adapting and being able to handle this. But I don't think the research supports that. Well, I think the, the one the study that I mentioned early on by Dr. Lee, uh, where he found an increase in uh, obesity and in asthma uh, in those of mothers who were exposed on these electric blankets uh, in utero, mm -hmm. and the uh, it's I think it tells you just the opposite that the exposure is more or less cumulative. You you get as you when you're a new individual, a new life, uh, even at the you know the early few cellular level. I mean you you don't have too much mass, and yet you can be exposed and influenced by these uh, fields. They so, have an yeah. effect on on the the. the chemistry, the biochemistry of your body. And we're not talking about electro blankets. We're talking about uh, mothers who are using cell phones and Wi-Fi devices and laptops and things. Yeah, that's what they're doing now. Yeah. And that the uh, there's no question that these things have effects. We don't know. I mean, not all of these things have been documented. A lot of the studies are done as uh, epidemiology studies, which are never conclusive. But when you do cellular studies, you realize that you've got uh, you know strong evidence that indicates that the cells are not able, not functioning the way you want them to function yeah. or not at the uh, the level that they should be functioning yeah and i should mention too that your book is extremely political because there's a whole uh, probably quarter of the book where you discuss how these types of toxic uh technologies have been introduced and why it took so long to get them to get them controlled it took a long time for a lot of things so so you know we just have to keep trying yeah, well, one of the more disturbing things... We have uh, just a minute here, but go ahead. Oh, well... Just, just till I give a break. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, okay, well, no, one of the more disturbing things is the fact that that uh, scientists have, what shall we say, got, have played into this kind of uh, divide and have uh, done things which I think are not necessarily uh, helping the uh, us to study the science and to get the message across to the public. The, uh, you can choose systems that will not respond the same way. Right. Not all cells respond. So you do a study with a cell that doesn't respond to EMF to the same extent, and you say, oh, I didn't get it that. that. And these are the kinds of studies that are often supported by the uh, industry. Industry. Yep. These are the industry paid experts that we and find they're so not, often. They're, they're doing science, but the science is not to, to uh, illuminate. It's to obscure. Exactly so. And that's the way it's always been. Just to remind people, you're listening to your own health and fitness. I'm Lena Berman, Jeff Fawcett sitting by, and we're doing a show today with Dr. Martin Blank, Ph.D., who is the author of Overpowered, What Science Tells Us About the Dangers of Cell Phones and Other Wi-Fi Devices. Uh, we have copies of Overpowered, which I really, really want everybody to have in their hands. It, it he is, He's a lovely person, and it was fun interviewing him. The book is... Is, as I said, the best of any of the books that I've read on this topic. It is so easy to read and it has so much information in it. Won't you please give us a call at 510 848 5732 or 1 800 439 5732 or online uh, on, on the web at kpfa.org. Don't miss an opportunity to get this book. Uh, it's really spectacular. This is a hard covered book. And and as I said, it goes over not only the science starting from explaining, which people get very confused. You know, I've had people say, what's the difference between the radio, the television? Um, and you'll learn exactly. And the electrical power and the different uh, frequencies uh, in the EMF spectrum and how they work. It's very clear when you read this book. It's very easy to understand. It's not geeky at all, but it is it is incredibly well informed. I mean, this is somebody who started, who's been been a researcher in all his life. He's, he's 80 um, and spent the last 40 years particularly focusing on the issues of EMF and now RF. Um, he is so well informed and the number of studies he cites there are studies that i didn't even know about and i thought that you know with all the shows i do and all the people i talk to i certainly was up to date on them but there are studies that made my mouth sort of hang open they're really remarkable and the explanations of of these things again five ten eight four eight five seven three two one eight hundred four three nine five seven three two kpfa.org we have three callers on the line we certainly need to see the phone lines 
light up. Uh, KPFA.org, a copy of Overpowered is a $100 pledge. I don't think I need to do the math for you. It's a very, very small amount for a year's worth of KPFA, um, invaluable KPFA, and certainly uh, supports our work on the station. It's the only reason I do the show, and Jeffrey and I do the show, is because it's on KPFA where we can speak freely. Um, he was talking about something toward the end. He talked about two things that were extremely important. I mean, one of them is that the body's adaptation to the constant onslaught of these stress proteins being produced is that it stops making stress. It stops being able. It disables the stress response. So it overwhelms and disables the stress response so that your body can't repair itself as it's exposed to this. The reason this is so important is because I've heard from people who say, well, I seem to be adapting to it. Well, that's not what's happening. What's happening is that your body is shutting down in response to the constant onslaught of this. It's very, very important to hear about this. His discussion in the second half of the show, which you'll be able to hear on our website, uh, yourownhealthandfitness.org, he talks about why DNA is an antenna and how sensitive our bodies are to frequencies, even very low frequencies. It's actually a fractal antenna for people who understand fractals. Um, and it, he explains it in this very, he, he actually reminds me the way he speaks and stuff, of course, is very familial for me. He sounds like a member of my family, like an older cousin or, a, you know, even a bit like my dad. And he has a lovely way of explaining it. He, he has a wonderful story in the book, which I'll tell you in a second. 510-848-5732-1800-439-5732. Please join the three callers on the line. Do not miss an opportunity to get this book and read it. You will want to share this with people. I promise you, it's the only way that people are going to be able to protect themselves. It isn't, it isn't um, a done deal. The deal here is for you to learn how to exist in a world that has changed. And you have the science and the specific instructions in this book on what sorts of measures you can take and how you can understand how to set up a house that gives you options and gives you a choice about when to be exposed, how to be exposed, how much to be exposed, and how to how to even shield and measure. 510-848-5732 1-800-439-5732 732. He talks about the scientific community's utter dismissal of the research, even aside from the power of the telecom companies and their industry paid experts, creating research that changes one aspect of the research so it's not repeating the research and doesn't get the same results. And then they publish that and say, see, it's not true. The story is that it's an old joke is that a man. Uh, jumps off the 86th floor of the of this huge uh, building, this business building in 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 Manhattan, and when he hits the 30th floor, he says, so, so "People hear he's, him saying as he goes down, oh, well, so far so good." So so there's this, you know, the, if I don't think about it, it, you know, right now I'm okay. So why should I care? So, again, only three callers on the line. We need your help. 510-848-5732, 1-800-439-5732. I kid you not, I am going to buy copies of this book and give them to people I love and care about so that they will understand what I've been trying to say here. Not to scare them to death, but to get them to take measures to protect them and above all their children the animals and birds and trees around them and future generations jeffrey anything what uh, most impressed you well i think martin blank is exactly the kind of scholar researcher um who belongs on kpfa clearly there's a lot of politics uh involved and he's very conscious of it but he's um he's He's a true blue scientist. He really believes one of the other things that he talks about in the second half of the uh, interview is w how scientists are supposed to behave, that the whole yes. scientific process is we're looking for the truth. In fact, we, we heard this 
uh, that he is saying that, you know, you're, you're supposed to be shedding light on issues, not obscuring them. Please call us. Help bring people like Martin Blank to KPFA, to the airwaves, to your ears, to the ears of your friends, family, people you don't even know. 510-848-5732, 1-800-439-5732, online at kpfa.org. What are you going to do if you find out that your children's school is about to install a Wi-Fi network and they're going to sell, they're going to rent space uh, for a cell tower in, in um, San Diego, a particular cellular tower, uh, it caused the deaths of, of a whole slew of young people because it was too close to their dormitories. Who, what, how will you respond? Well, Martin actually consulted with uh, a family that was trying to keep this out of their children's school, and he gave them information, which is in the book. All this information is in the book on how to communicate with the school board and the other parents so that there was a, an outcry. And they won. They didn't put in the thing. They used wired connections for everything in the school. I mean, it was an enormous victory, but you can't do it if you don't have the information and the studies in your hand. Um, the other thing is that it's just important to understand, have an overview of what's going on. Not so that you're afraid. We don't want to make you afraid. We want to make you thoughtful about what you're doing. The You know, the studies on cell phones and brain tumors is that when you use them a lot, like more than 40 minutes a day, and most people who use them use them that much, more than 40 minutes a day for 10 years, it doubles the amount of, a ch- that doubles your chances of getting a brain tumor. If your child uses a cell phone and then by the time they're 20, their chances of a brain tumor are 500 times higher, 500%. So, What does that mean? Well, it means that it's likely that if you restrict the amount of time you spend on your cell phone, if you only use it for what it's best used for, which is for your work or to stay in contact or to respond to an emergency, you won't be doing it for 40 minutes a day. If you have messages that you can pick up um, at various times and you can leave the phone in a standby mode, you will protect yourself. It doesn't mean you have to give it up. And then if you want to play games and do entertainment and stuff on your computer, you can do that when you get home and you can really concentrate on what you're doing instead of doing it while you're driving. And you can have a wired connection. So there are solutions to continue to be part of the digital revolution without giving up on the things you love. Two callers on the line. We're not getting the response we had hoped for. Um, I know that this audience really likes this show because we normally uh, have a lot of very generous contributions. And we need need your help. We need your support. So you do that by calling 510-848-5732-1-800-439-5732 and kpfa.org. Those of you listening online, don't forget about you. This is to educate. This book is invaluable. This is the best of the books that I've had during Fun Drive, as far as I'm concerned. This book will educate you f- and prepare you so that you can move around in this environment, not thinking, well, I'm just not going to worry about it, but staying engaged and staying thoughtful, just like you do with the food you eat, the water you drink. People are being activists about all sorts of exposures, GMOs, all the rest of it. We want to know. When it comes to to this type of technology, people suddenly don't want to know. It isn't all bad news. You can do things to make it more protective. Again, two callers on the line, not what we had hoped for. We know that you can do better than that. We know that you have, those of you who can afford, will be supporting the people who can't afford to call in. And this book is a hardbound book. It will last a long time and you will find that you want to pass it around especially to family members with children so please won't you give us a call now or get online at kpfa.org get a copy of overpowered um what science tells tells us about the dangers of cell phone and other wi-fi age devices and what you can do about them 510-848-5732-1800-439-5732 i'll tell you one of the things that gives 
kind of gives me hope, gives me hope about this process is that this book is not published by some obscure publisher. This is a Random House book. Or it's a subsidiary, but it's isn't it Seven Stories? Isn't yeah. that who it's yeah. been? Yeah. Well, th- um, that's ma- th- this is major publishing house stuff. I remember a couple of years ago I floated an idea to uh, an agent to write a book about wireless issues, and oh man, the silence was deafening. Um, but there's more and more coming out, and part of the process of getting it out more and more is doing what we do on the show and having people like Martin Blank on the show to uh, create churn around this issue. Uh, to talk about it and believe me this book is going to help you participate in that churn that you are going to be making deliberate decisions about how you are exposed and how your friends are exposed I- Go ahead. 510-848-5732, 1-800-439-5732, and kpfa.org. I asked Martin what sort of things could could change in the future to design these technologies to be more protective along with, you know, maybe shielding the devices better, but you still got the stuff in the air. And he, he had a number of thoughts. He said, first of all, they can be made to run at a lower power. They don't have to be uh, as strong. And if they were operating at a lower frequency, at a lower power, they they wouldn't need to be as many cell towers around to support them. Uh, Although I think the cell towers are for other reasons as well, because as you know, they know exactly where you are. If your cell phone is on, if it's in a a shielded bag, they don't know where you are if you have it off. So, uh, you know, there's that. And then so the devices can be made to be less powerful and less dangerous. There's um, other things that they can do, you know, they can put switches, make it easier to turn things on and turn things off quickly. You can have, uh, if if people must, you know, there are wired Wi-Fi routers and Wi-Fi hubs. You don't, I mean, you don't have to, they're not Wi-Fi, but broadband. Um, You don't have to be wireless with with uh broadband but you can in any case have easy turn off on and off switches on all of these things so they can be turned off after they're being used also the telecommunications act needs to be uh, changed so that a uh, local local governments have some power in deciding how close to a house these uh cell towers can be there's um a, 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 there are many incidents and studies of people uh, lots of cancer clusters and loss of death for for people being close to cell towers. So among the directions he gives you is try to find housing that's not close to cell towers. Try not to live in apartments where you're surrounded by people. Try to make prudent decisions about how much of this you're going to be exposed to, and what, you know, make decisions about where you go. You know, maybe you don't want a Wi-Fi hotspot for dinner. So, 510-848-5732, would you like some cancer with your salad? 1-800-439-5732 or kpfa.org. And I will, as long as I'm on the air, I mean, they can yank me off. Um, I will keep talking about this because the only way, you know, it's going to be in some years from now, people will remember this and they'll say, oh, my God, that's what she was talking about there's no question that we're going to see a bad coming up in, of this but the idea is for those of us you know all the people for all the many generations who have been warning about all think about how long it's taken people to wake up to the to the climate change issue and they're still not still not ready to make changes and you're you're an individual you can make some choices you have the power to make a choice and with this book overpowered you will be very knowledgeable and you'll be able to make intelligent choices to protect you and your family and make decisions about how to use these things so that you can enjoy them and enjoy the convenience of them without enjoying the the bad effects of losing your immune competence having your heart damaged losing your capacity to sleep and people 
people are starting to take insomnia for granted these days. They think it's a natural thing. 510-848-5732. 1-800-439-5732. KPFA.org. People who have listened to this show for a long time know that I wouldn't be pushing something this hard unless I really believe in it. You may not agree with me, but you deserve to at least give a look at this book because this book, if it doesn't change your mind, then fine. But I really believe it will. And I don't think you should be afraid of having a little chink of light coming through the wall. Um, I think it's better to know there's a crack in, in the structure. One last thing, Jeffrey, before we... I think it is utterly astounding that we have been able to push back as much as we have on this issue and that this issue hasn't just been squashed uh, because of the extremely powerful uh, interests that are lined up behind advancing yeah. this te- technology. And, yeah. and I'm not just talking about the, the, the huge amounts of money supporting the telecom industry. It, as I learn more and more about this, uh, what yeah. I said in, in my comment, this has military applications right. and that has big muscle behind it. So uh, in an in an odd way, we are winning and we're down. winning because of KPFA. We've got to close it out. Thank you to you those of you who've been calling KPFA.org. listening to 94.1 KPFA and 89.3